Well, from food to finance, it's been a tumultuous week for global stock markets. America's disappointing unemployment figures for May are increasing fears that the world's largest economy is slowing down. In Europe, their currency has soared to a one-month high thanks to news that Greece's next aid installment should be available in July. But with yet another grade from a major ratings agency, the region still looks shaky. And in Japan, there's talk that the prime minister will be replaced, adding to growing concerns about the country's recovery. Well, here to tell us more is Gary Dugan, the chief investment officer for private banking at Emirates NBD. Welcome to the show this evening. Great right, to welcome. see you as always. So let's begin by talking about the U.S. jobs figure. Certainly some disappointing data uh, for there in May, showing the slowest amount of growth uh, for eight months. Only 54,000 new workers were employed there. But is this really a surprise? Looking around the world, various governments are certainly slowing uh, the ways that they were planning to boost their economy that was linked to the 2008 financial crisis. So, you know, is this something we sh should have been expecting? We should have been expecting it, but we didn't want it. I mean, we <laughs> always want more employment growth. Without employment growth, you don't get the retail sales growth. Without retail sales growth, you don't get uh, the companies feeling more confident and therefore employ more people. So it's very circular. At the moment, the U.S. is showing no sign of a sustained recovery. And that's why people now start to talk about the Federal Reserve coming back and helping or the U.S. government coming back and helping. We're still in quite a mess. So do you think we will see things improve short term, long term in the US? Is there a, a time period we can look at? It's like getting an injury. It takes some time and you've got to be patient for the, to recover. And I think it's the same with the US economy. There's no quick fix. We've tried every quick fix and it really <laughs> hasn't worked. So I think you're looking about a kind of a recovery that will take one to two years, even from where we stand today. Now, speaking of the U.S. economy, uh, we've seen a weak dollar following the, the report's release, uh, still not doing so well, but the euro has risen sharply. It hit uh, four-month highs just a week ago, and we saw another one-month high this Monday with EU uh, aid optimism. Um, can you take us through the details of the next Greek payments and how that's all going to factor in? Yes, the IMF is already committed to trying to support the Greek government and the Eurozone has as well, but it really requires quite significant tough measures in Greece in order for that money to be released. However, I just don't believe that the Greeks are really going to provide all of the comfort to those two agencies in order for them to necessarily release the money. But if they don't release the money, then you have uh, a pending financial crisis in Europe. So the policymakers, it's almost like a, some kind of game here. The policymakers recognize they really are playing with fire here. And unless they find some kind of agreement, any agreement, there could be a financial crisis in Europe within the next six months. I think that's definitely one of the big topics at the moment. I mean, there's talk about having a debt exchange for Greece's private sector creditors. But as you said, people are saying that this could lead to the Eurozone, the first uh, Euro country defaulting in history. Now, plunging Greece into debt, even for a very short period of time, is a very difficult decision to make. Do you think we could see this uh, happen? I think they will never call it default, but in effect it will be that they will not make the payments. Um, but what they will do is they'll delay. So a bond that was, say, a two-year bond becomes a five-year bond. Five-year bonds become ten-year bonds. It just means that as an investor, it will take you longer to get your money back off the Greek government. That will help. It will relieve it somewhat. But still, if Greece does not fundamentally change, if it doesn't become competitive in global markets, Greece will still be facing problems in the future, as will the Eurozone. Definitely huge protests on the streets. People are not happy about it over there. Not at all. All right, now outside of Europe, uh, Japan is not also doing uh, too well, unfortunately. Uh, the um, Tokyo Electric Power Company, the company behind the damaged Fukushima plant, uh, is uh, there's speculation that it might be delisted. And uh, they're also calling for a replacement for the prime minister. Um, but is this really the right call to take? I mean, mightn't a new PM just destabilize the recovery efforts further? I agree with you. It doesn't really need another prime minister. I mean, fundamentally, Japan has a big problem. Its population is in decline. There is no net new immigration into the country. And really, from all the problems they've had in the past, they've ne not, never really got to a point where you can see consistent growth. The unfortunate thing is that this earthquake has only really generated even more problems for the economy in the very short term. However, if they really grasp the situation, pour money into uh, the country in order to try and make good all the damage that's been done, then Japan maybe for the next two years enjoys better growth than we've seen for some time. 
Well, certainly looking back towards the UAE, there's a bit more positive news than this region here, thankfully. Uh, the news that the cost of uh, insuring Dubai's debt against a possible default has actually uh, fallen to its lowest level for 18 months, helped along by Emirates Airlines bond selling. How important is this news for the market? Well, I think it's tremendous news. I mean, I think, you know, Dubai had sat there really unloved by the markets for some considerable time, way, way beyond the fundamentals. And although living here, it's very easy to see the fundamentals of more vibrant growth. For an international investor, they didn't see it. But issues like Emirates Airlines raised the profile of the region and I think continue to do good in the sense of people recognizing this is not a bad place to be investing. And the premiums, the risk premiums, the higher yields that are, are available here are a very attractive proposition for investors globally looking for yield. Absolutely. Now, in other UAE news, uh, Emirates MBD and the Department of Economic Development recently signed an agreement to help uh, SMEs uh, here in the Emirates. Um, what is this really going to do for the sector? It's, uh, I hope, going to be very, very crucial because if you look at somewhere like Germany or the United States, okay, historically very strong economies, maybe a bit of a worry in the very near term, but these are fundamentally based upon the growth of small businesses. Small businesses have become large businesses. Any initiative that continues to support SMEs who provide very significant employment growth prospects will do very well and provide a very backbone of growth for the local economy here. This sounds like business is booming here in the UAE. <laughs> well, Gary, Hopefully. thank you so much for joining us. Great to see sure, you and you. appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank for having you. Me.